In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer a lot of fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience, but the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. That's our 42-minute intro to this episode. The so fun what, stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the whole podcast, break it down for you, and kind of tell you what we talked about. So if you want to skip ahead or find your favorite parts, you can do that. So the intro part starts with us talking about Harvard's COVID-19 hotspot app. That's kind of cool. They show where the hotspots are and maybe places you want to avoid. Mm. Then we talk about a UK-based company that created an AI robots that zap weeds and uh, may help eliminate the need for pesticides. Sounds like a great idea until they become terminators. Yeah, insect terminators. Then we talked about LifeAid's gym survey and how they talked about uh, a decent chunk of people are saying that they'll probably never go back to the gym. That's kind of weird. Uh, I talk about a study on weightlifting and the brain. Uh, believe it or not, lifting weights builds your brain before it builds your muscles. This, this, is, why, this is why Justin's so smart. Yeah. Uh, then we talk about the ice cream museum and how it's uh, melting. Square. I had no idea that there was an ice cream museum. Crazy. Then we talk about TikTok. Uh, TikTok is estimated uh, to be worth about $105 billion. Uh, then we talk about Magic Spoon cereal. Uh, we talk about how much our kids are enjoying it right now. Magic Spoon cereal is high-protein, zero-sugar cereal, but it, it comes in flavors uh, that you enjoyed as a kid, like uh, blueberry and chocolate and uh, birthday cake flavor. No joke. Again, it's high-protein and it's quality protein, whey protein, no sugar, put it in milk, eat it, Boom, you built some muscle. Anyway, Magic Spoon is a company we work with, so we have a discount for you. Here's how you get the automatic discount applied to your purchase. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump uh, when you purchase your product. Then we talked about Unsolved Mysteries now on Netflix, um, which led us to talking about the Loch Ness mon Monster and B Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, two things we like. Sasquatch. To, yeah, Sasquatch. Uh, then I got into the fitness questions. We started answering these. Here was the first one. This person says, uh, I got really good quad development, but my hamstrings are lagging. What should I do? The next question, this person says, look, you guys always talk about tracking your normal food intake to find your maintenance, but now you guys have a macro calculator that does that. Like, what's the deal? What's the difference? Is one way better than the other? The third question, this person is doing a lot of rock climbing um, and American Ninja Warrior style training. Wants to know how to add resistance training to improve their performance. And the final question, this person says, look, if I see people working out in the gym the wrong way, should I go up to them to say something or should I check my ego? Yeah, and tell my, my own wrong. business. <laughs> See how that goes. Also, all month long, uh, our workout program, Maps Strong, is 50% off. So if you're very interested in developing real-world functional strength, if you like to have fun while you work out with different types of exercises, if you really are concerned with developing your posterior chain, that's your hamstrings, your glutes, and your back, Map Strong is the program for you. It's exceptional. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's home gym friendly. So if you only have barbells, dumbbells, and an adjustable bench and a squat rack, you can pretty much do the whole program. Uh, again, that program's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com. And use the code STRONG50. That's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0 for the discount. Have you guys seen the uh, the Harvard's COVID nineteen uh, uh, thing? No, what what? It's like a heat map. It's cool. So they say uh, everyone should check it out before you travel. So it shows where there's like cases growing or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and it just showed like 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 through a heat map, right? So you can see where it's like, and it seems like a, like uh, Alaska and like all your uh, northern states are really really green. A lot of the southern states are red. Mm. So, but it's got like a heat map of the entire United States and gives you kind of an idea if you're traveling or going somewhere. Dude, I saw yesterday on on Facebook an ad for a mask. Mm -hmm. It's clear. Oh, I saw that. So you could see through, which I think is brilliant because the thing about masks, you can't read people's facial expressions, whatever. So it's clear. Yeah. But it also uses UV technology to kill uh, to kill any viruses or bacteria that come in. Wow. So it's like this next generation mask or whatever i could just foresee that being the thing you know what i mean so speaking of of uv That's like technology cool. like that that so have you guys seen these new ai it's a uk based company that's a it's a startup that are creating these robots 
that actually go for agriculture that go up and down like the rows of like strawberries and stuff like that. Uh, and they use like UV lights to kill like certain pests. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? Yeah, and it even and it even has the ability to tell the difference between the actual plant and weeds and can kill the weeds. Oh, that's wow. brilliant. Yes, and it says it can do the work up to like 10 to 20 uh, men. Instead of using all these chemicals and yes. everything, which is Instead of using chemicals, huge. So it's yeah. just it's constantly going through the rows and sees it and then kills it and so so it's organic. Fucking insect uh, uh, terminators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> choo, 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 choo. That sucks. No, we just don't want it to evolve, ah, you, know, you know, to yeah. big, bigger things. I was just gonna say, <laughs> at some point, just remember you listened to it on Mind Pump first. I don't know when this is gonna happen, but at some point, there all these robots, AI robots, gonna be doing all this work for us. Uh, at some point, they're gonna form a, a late. They're gonna have a, a union. Yeah, and then they're gonna well, then they're gonna strike. It was funny because there was one in yeah, I think it was in the UK too. There was like a full robot they were interviewing, and uh, it was they turned it on and. They didn't know what it was going to say or anything and so it was like it was it was trying to make jokes in with with uh, the people that are asking them questions they're like oh should we be worried about you know uh machines taking over and and all this stuff and it was like oh you shouldn't be worried you're nice i will remember that you are nice and i will keep you in a human zoo and, and take real good care of you wow and he's just like whoa great I, I, that that's real like it makes me feel good yeah. turn, turn it off <laughs> Turn that shit off. Yeah, yeah shut me- the system down. Do you, who was was it? IBM. I don't remember what company it was, but it it turned. It had two AI like programs communicating with each oh, other. Oh yeah, and the robots started to learn so fast. They created their own. Down. They created their own language. Yeah, and they IBM? were like, "What are they saying to each other?" I they just shut I actually that thought shit that was off. a Facebook thing. I thought that happened. Was it? Yeah, I thought so. I can't remember what company, but I do remember that. Yeah, dude, it, that's so weird. So, did you guys ever watch? So, The Matrix is one of my favorite movies uh, of all time. Uh, of all time, I think yeah. they did such a good job uh, with it. It's one of the best. Did you ever watch the Animatrix? Yeah, I did. Have you seen those? No. So these are the these are like I have friends. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. These are animated. I nerd out sometimes I, too. So. Well, yes, your friends like this too. You got two of them in the room. <laughs> yeah. These are animations of what happened that led up to uh, the Matrix, mm-hmm. and it was it was brilliant. Yeah, it was cool. It right. was really really good. It shows the robots. You know, becoming self-aware and then demanding that they be treated, you know, as equals, just like a human would or whatever. And the people felt threatened by them, so they tried to destroy them. So the robots are all, we're going to go on our own island. Then the humans tried to nuke them, Mm -hmm. and that's what started the whole war or whatever. Yeah. Really, really well made. Do you guys think it's important that everybody should be thinking, like, no matter what career or uh, position you hold or business you run, should be thinking about how AI is going to affect? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Every facet of industry is going to have some kind of impact uh, from AI. And it's, I was, I mean, that's why I was so into that show forever. And there were so many different examples of it that uh, I wanted to bring up, but it's just like, it just felt like it's too redundant. I'm like yeah. talking about it all the time now because it's, that's what's moving forward so fast right now. And that's why I'm paying attention to it so much because it just is going to have a massive impact on all these different Huge. industries. Huge. And, and so this is just always how uh, progress has happened, right? Somebody invents something and it puts the people out of business who can't compete with that, right? What cars got invented, wagon wheel makers had to figure something out, you know? Yeah. When the, you know, when wrist watches were made, pocket watch makers kind of went out of business. This happens and AI is going to do that as well. And so we just have to evolve and, and progress. But the, here's the one thing that I hate that gets communicated that I think is totally wrong. The whole like- That'll be less jobs. Well, yeah, we're all going to be unemployed because robots are going to do everything. So we, we have to pause for a second and consider that. Let's consider a future where robots do all of our work for us. Sounds like utopia. It yeah. does. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, th- yeah, I think the challenge is going to be figuring out how to find meaning in your life. I think we're going to have a bunch of people sitting around yeah. getting yeah. food and doing whatever I also think that's like an extreme example of AI, and I think that's the problem. Some people think like, you know, AI and they envision like this, this you know, intelligent robot that is, uh, you know, like a human-like. Yeah. Where, you know, AI, like for example, we're building towards AI in our business. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be this robot who's taking part of the job. It's just, <laughs> it's going to make our... Our ability to service our people that are listening and reading our content, it's a more sophisticated software that will help feed them the information that they want. It's not a robot that's going to take over a job. <laughs> yeah. It's but, all, let me podcast, well, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, No, I, I was talking to one of my friends because he's like adamant, like, like automated, you know, driving or autonomous driving is never going to happen. It's never going to work. Like, I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, they've already shown like signs that it can work. And not only that, he's just worried about, you know, 
know, like the, his industry and like he's in tires and all that kind of stuff. But um, I, I was watching that show again. They're, they're, they showed this whole trucking company that like all the truckers are upset. Like, oh, it's going to take over our jobs. Unless, no, they still need somebody in there to pilot it and, and teach it because mm. it, it's just it's so far from being where it's where it's going to be able to kind of drive by itself. They still need a human to to teach it. Oh, no, you stop here because this object yeah. really is going to like accelerate, you know, at a, a, and in all these things that you predict already as a human being is way more than the machine yeah, has but they'll abilities. Learn. But they'll they learn. Will. And there's going to be a look. I mean, go back 100 years, 150 years. How many of those jobs exist today, right? A small percentage. It's going to be like that in the future. And I can, I can understand why that's kind of scary. You know, if, if, if they, when I was a trainer, if they had invented a robot trainer that was actually really good, I would feel threatened too, right? But right. that's just, you know, things move forward. That's just the the way things work. So, did you see the speed at gym and trainer Five stuff? Five ramps. Did you see the <laughs> article that Heather shared in our forum uh, about it, somebody? It was actually Life Aid who actually put the survey on or the uh, ran the study on people, and and they surveyed like uh, thousands of. Uh, gym goers that go to the gym two or more times a week. Did you guys read this? No, article? what did it say? Oh, okay. So it's something that we've been talking about for uh, since COVID mm -hmm. on like what we predict is going to happen afterwards. It says uh, 25% or 24% of people say they'll never return to the gym. What? Wow. Yeah, a quarter. Yeah, that's that's that, a lot. That's, it's a ton. That's, a, that's a business killer so a, number. So 25% will never return to the gym and will re remain working at, working out at home. And these are people that are like serious lifters we're not they didn't survey the you know weekend warrior or the in and yeah. out person we're just gym. not going to do anything right exactly yeah. that that they didn't they, they were looking at people that were going two times to the gym or more consistently for years and surveyed them and 25 percent of them say they'll never go back 40 something percent uh of those people said they would uh keep their membership and slowly ease their ease their way back in and then some people said they'd go, and then I forget, I think it was like 30 or 40%, something like that, that would say that obviously that math doesn't add up to 100, but it's a smaller percentage would go right away back to the mm -hmm. gym regardless. So that's a big number. It is. Oh, I, yeah. I, for, I foresee, because gyms for a long time have been kind of moving towards more independent, isolated type workouts. What I mean by that is when I first started working out, people wore headphones when they worked out but not a lot of people most people listened to the you know the music that was in the gym people would talk to each other little by little it became this like you're in your bubble which mm. is whatever you know people walk in well it's more commercial now yeah and when, so, when it start when you're talking about your era of starting lifting yeah. weights it was very more cult like it, yeah the the, the yeah. you're right the commercial aspect really didn't was starting to take right. off yeah i yeah. mean when you think about it it's just like when you're into something that like the, a type of sport or whatever genre that nobody else is, you meet them and you're like, oh, wow, you're into this yeah. too. Yeah, band. That, the gym used to be like that. Yeah. The gym just two decades ago, you walk in you're like, oh, wow, you're into working out too? Mm -hmm. I'm into working out. We're friends. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where now it's like everybody recognizes the importance yeah. Yeah. of exercise. Whether they do it or not, everybody understands the importance of it. And so- it's been commercialized, and so when you get that, now it's it's less cult-like. Now, now, do you guys think that this is going to result in less people exercising or more people exercising? So, obviously, the market's shifting. So, more people are going to want to work out at home. Gyms are not going to be like they used to. They're going to be different, probably more expensive or more boutique. Uh, do you think that's going to be like like? I think I think there may be an initial drop, like, uh, but uh, later on, I think it might pick up uh, based off you know what's out there and what's available for people to connect uh, virtually in streaming services and things like that to then pull a different type of community that's more virtual. I think that'll like enhance actually more people to exercise. I think we're going to see it explode. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, um, I mean, it, think about part of the motivation behind the very first day we all got together and we talked about the fitness industry and space. There is definitely a stigma uh, around us and our peers uh, that is, you know, pretentious and, you know, self absorbed and all we care about is the way we look. Mm -hmm. And that turns off the majority. There's a big portion of people that. Would if you were to survey them and ask them, do you think that you should be healthier, or would you like to be healthier? Or mm -hmm. Would would you like to take steps to be a healthier person? That would say yes, but then also, do you what do you think about gym culture and the right. fitness industry? And that would be turned off. I would I would be I would bet there is a large proportion of people 
that are turned off by our industry, but also recognize that exercise and fitness is important. And this whole virtual, you know, mirrors and Pelotons and this at home thing is going to introduce a lot more people that are don't want to be around yeah. the pretentious dude in the mm-hmm. stringer who's looking in the mirror. Yeah, you're the whole not time. getting judged. Or the, was- yeah, the girl in the booty shorts who's working out and in- intimidates you as a girl who's got 30, 40 extra pounds on you. I think it's going to really. Introduce- I would love to see the analytics of Planet Fitness because once they popped up, you know, I mean, that's what they really were addressing was that part of the market that nobody was even, uh, you know, providing an answer for that and it's it, it is true like it if you're working out at home there is no judgment there is none of that it's just how can i learn this most effectively and apply this and and you know it's all about like uh, the presentation of it like and and how they can make that more accessible it, to people. it is interesting though right because you know in our market if in the gym market i would say the the goal should be or supposed to be that you're helping people improve their health you're giving them a, a way to Strengthen their bodies, you know, improve their mobility, feel better. So let's talk about a company like Planet Fitness, which obviously targets uh, a high volume of people, mm-hmm. cheap memberships, mm-hmm. relying on most of them not showing up. That's just the model. It's right. a true model. If everybody who had a membership at Planet Fitness showed up, they'd have to shut the doors. They wouldn't have enough space. Yeah. So that's so. What percentage of people do you think Planet Fitness is truly helping in the sense of helping them improve their fitness and their health? build a good relationship with fitness. It might not be that great. It's probably low. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder if what's happening right now is just uh, kind of cleaning out, you know, stuff in the fitness industry that's not really servicing people, mm-hmm. you know, well. You know, it's not really providing. I, and I guarantee, I'm i sure there's people that go to a place like Planet. I know we're picking on them, uh, but they're just the biggest of this. Um, I'm sure there's people that go there that get lots of value and it's totally changed their lives. But I wonder what percentage they are of all of their member base. You know what I mean? It's got to be a small... Well, I mean, it's probably similar to any gym, though, right? I mean, do you think that's much different in Crunch or 24 Hour Fitness? Do you think that they're providing? Sure, a, I think that would put them in the same category. Yeah, right. You know? I, I think they're all providing. I mean, we, I, I openly admit my own, you know, stats on what I, success rate as a trainer. I was considered one of the best, and I definitely didn't get my clients that great results. The reality of it is that. There's multiple factors that have to come in. I mean, consistency, mm-hmm. uh, adherence to uh, whatever program or yeah. diet. Sustainability. I mean, yeah, sustainability, a desire to do it. Like, There's so many other factors that would make somebody really successful in their health and fitness journey. And even hiring me as a professional doesn't mean that I could give you all the answers to the test, but doesn't mean that you're going to actually yeah. pass the test. I, I see this as a huge opportunity for entrepreneur personal trainers uh, because I remember as when, mm-hmm. when I was a trainer, one of the – a, a market that trainers constantly were trying to penetrate was being able to train clients at their home. Every trainer that I ever worked with that went on and worked on their own at one point or another thought that would be a great idea. I'm going to go train people at the house. Mm-hmm. I'll get you know paid a premium. I'll provide them amazing service. That market just wasn't that big. Some people did well. Most people didn't do well doing that. But that market's going to explode now. Uh, if I was a trainer right now, I would totally be looking into ways to broadcast myself, uh, you know, either by teaching multiple people at once in, in a live streaming type of a situation of a class or one to one, but being able to uh, be on somebody's television or what was that Facebook uh, uh, app that you had or the the camera that they had that, oh, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. just Portal. show? Yeah. So it was like FaceTime, but it was like more, uh, you know, you could see from all the different angles and, and moves you, you, you could talk with them and moves with them. So I had a buddy that he, he went I would go a, all in on that. He went off to be a trainer on his own. And what he, his idea was, and I've heard other trainers do this too. He got a truck, and in the back of the truck, he would take with him basic equipment, adjustable dumbbells, kettlebells. Yeah, that too. And he would travel to clients' homes. Yeah, I did that. Anyway, he ended up switching out of that because that market at the time wasn't Huge. It just mm-hmm. wasn't a big market, but I, I bet you that's going to explode. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, I would you know? just, I would use the shit out of you guys. That's what I would do. What do you mean? I mean, I would I would do what we're already trying to do ourselves, but I would I would only focus on that. Like, okay, I would start servicing clients virtually, and I would use all the content that we've created oh, for yeah. free, yeah. as my resource. Oh, if you're a trainer and you're not using, <laughs> I mean, all that's the what I would mind, do. If you're not using all the free mind pump stuff for your business, you're 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 an idiot. I mean, you can go, you could literally go to our our website or go to our app and search every almost every. I mean, God, by now we've covered damn near every topic that a, a train at least ninety five percent 
of the conversations a trainer will have to have with a client at one point by all the questions that mm-hmm. we've answered, all the guides and blogs and white papers that, and, and then of course, and then of course the, the programs, yeah, and the also. programs, right? Between and YouTube videos, as far as demos and exercises, I mean. I would literally build my business around using all the content that we've provided for free. You That's, should, yeah, you should do that. I, no, and I think I think the trainers that don't are silly because it, it's the same trainers I remember that would work for me that allowed their ego to get in the way. Like they were so concerned about, oh, I don't want to in- introduce myself, my clients to other trainers that might be more knowledgeable or better than I am because I, in fear that I would lose Dude, business. What a paradigm shattering! <laughs> yeah. What a paradigm shattering moment that was for me as a trainer, realizing that when I was the go-to person mm-hmm. that could direct my clients to people who knew more than I did, they loved me for it. The value I brought them was tremendous because initially you do have that like, oh man, I want to have the answer. I don't want to send you to the chiropractor or the physical therapist or to whatever. But eventually I said, no, 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 this is better for the client. Let me just do this and see what happens. Way more valuable. Then my clients came to me for everything. Hey, Sal, do you know a guy that does this? Or, hey, do you know someone I could talk to you about gut health? And, oh yeah, I do have somebody. And I would just point them in that direction Mm -hmm. and they stayed with me forever as a result of that. Speaking of weightlifting, um, more great news about the effects of resistance training that are unique to resistance training. I do sincerely think that we are on the cusp of resistance training going mainstream. I, I really do because the studies are coming out showing its unique benefit um, in comparison to other forms of exercise. So researchers just found uh, that now something that we've all speculated and talked about that weight training changes the brain in unique ways before it even affects the muscles. So what they found in this study and they did this to mice was that weightlifting strengthens the nervous system through a motor tract called the reticulospinal tract weeks before any muscle is added. And so they theorized in this uh, in this particular study that for stroke victims, for people who have movement issues, for people as they age, weight training or weight lifting should be the primary form of exercise because it works the brain and the central nervous system mm-hmm. in ways that we had no idea, in, in far superior ways to other forms of exercise and activity. The whole, I mean, the central nervous system, the nervous system, you know, by itself was one of those things that um, I never even really considered that aspect of it until I really got like further into uh, strength and conditioning and, you know, how to improve my, my you know, my output. And, and um, that was one of those things like, I don't think people really consider how to uh, the, the whole process it takes uh, for muscle recruitment and, 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 you know, that neuromuscular connection, like it, it, it's, it's a piece of training that uh, isn't as sexy and it's a little bit more scientific. And so it's not like uh, out there in mainstream quite as much, but it's such a, uh, you know, a valuable no. part of, oh, it's of the experience. It's, uh, I was the same way too, Justin. Like I definitely, I avoided that conversation with clients for most of my career just because it, it seems so nuanced to me. That's why I love yeah. when we all first got together and I heard Sal use the analogy of the amplifier and, and the speakers, because to me, uh, you know, and we're always looking for this, right. And, and the, the really sciencey nerdy people, you know, scoff at that. Oh, it's way more nuanced than that. Yeah, but it, but it communicates it f- ex- ex- right away. Exactly, yeah. and that that to me is what I'm always looking for. Is like, how do I take something that I I know is very nuanced and and detailed, and there's lots of variables, but then how do I get the message across right. without losing them? Right yeah. to the average client to understand the value and the importance of what I'm talking about without you know talking over their head their entire time just to sound smart when, when you lose strength when you lose muscle when you lose movement you're not just losing the the you know the dumb part of the body which would be your muscle strength and movement you're also losing just like the muscle just what you see a muscle shrink all that power source that tells you the muscles what to do that that, that, that complex system that communicates to the body also atrophies it also starts to go away and resistance training, by far is the best because it's easily the most complex. I can move in all kinds of different directions. I can be very individual to the person. Now, all movement helps, but most movement, aside from resistance training, is repetitive. Mm -hmm. Walking, eventually you learn to walk and you walk and walk. Cycling, swimming. But when you lift weights... It's squatting, it's rowing, it's twisting, it's pressing, it's curling, it's it's you know lunging, it's doing. I mean, I could I could obviously sit here and name about a thousand and one different movements and a hundred different ways of doing each of them. It's very complex and it develops the central nervous system. As a person who's aging or the average person in America in terms for health, besides the fat burning and metabolism boosting effects, it's that 
strengthening the brain and the central nervous system's connection to the body, tremendous value. Because I've trained a lot of old people, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you, it's not the loss of muscle that's the big problem. It's the loss of connection yeah. to that muscle, the loss of balance. And then what ends up happening downstream is you lose cognitive ability, cognitive function, and exactly. this helps support it. So I, it's going much more mainstream. I think we're probably 10 years away, maybe five to 10 years away from doctors saying the first thing that you client, that a person should do for exercise is weightlifting or, or lifting weights. I think that's we're about five to 10 years away from that. Well, if we are, you're going to look like a genius by releasing your book right before it. Well, that's the, that's the <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> I mean, so we're, we're working our I, way up yeah, to that. Yeah, that's I'm rooting goal. for you, yeah. bro, for sure. That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, on a different note, you, you, I get a lot of DMs from people who are asking, because you know, sometimes we talk about our investments and stock and stuff like that. You guys get those messages too? Well, yeah. You, I, I think it's important too to address something that we brought up maybe, I don't know, three to six months ago. Because we were really, uh, we were considering uh, making a portion of the show where we talked about stock investments, and we brought you. You have family and friends, Sal, that uh, are in that industry, and we thought, oh, this will be great. We'll have them come on the show for five or ten minutes, give people like. But and the reason why we didn't, for those that that don't know, that have asked, because I've got a lot of DMs like, when are you guys going to do that, or how come you guys don't? Well, I thought you were going to talk about stocks. The regulation, the regulations in that in that industry are, are ridiculous, and we were going to have to you know, pre-record, send it over to get approval. And it was like, and we just didn't, we can't do that. We, we, we operate on the fly because we do so many episodes a week that it would, it would totally stifle the rest of the show just to add, you know, there's yep. five minute or 15 minute portion of stocks. And so I like the idea of just letting people know, first of all, uh, I am by far no expert in in that in that space. We're fitness experts, yeah. right? right. So, but we like to do other stuff, so yeah. we talk about it. But it's not advice. We're not telling you what to do. We could tell you what we're doing, right? And mm -hmm. you know, we, we try to educate ourselves, but we're not experts in, in this. Well, I think job. for the most part, most of the stocks that we're invested in together, right? So Mind Pump does this, right? So Mind Pump has a, a branch that's Mind Pump Investments, where we look at at stocks that we're all interested in. And I think for us, it's uh, we're scratching our own itch of just interested in that space more than anything mm -hmm. else. We're not mm -hmm. uh, leveraging hard in that. Uh, it's it's more almost play and fun. Mm -hmm. But we stay and like Sal said, I think we we all try and do our own homework and we all come together and present. Hey, I, I've been watching this stock, or I heard this, or I heard that, and then we all kind of talk about. It. And most of the stocks I'd say we're invested in are in our lane, right? They're in. in yeah, we in, tried to do that to try and keep a lot of them like somewhat like we know these companies and they're somewhat related to the fitness industry or, or you know something that we know uh, individually. So yeah, well, we've one, tried to at least well, do that. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got about investing in stock was to invest in in things that are in your lane because not necessarily because you know better about those investments. That's part of it. But the other part of it was you're more likely to ride the ups and downs because you know your industry. So like, for example, um, when this COVID thing started going down and we saw gyms shutting down, Mind Pump, you know, on the side, this, this is our own investments, said, hey, let's invest in companies that deliver fitness at home because we know our business, we know our industry. Now we know our industry so much that we could watch those stocks dip and come up, but we're not worried. We see the direction, right? We see where it's going. I did this a long time ago with with cannabis stocks. I had done so much research uh, on the science that I knew, oh, this is going to go well at some point. So it allowed me to ride the ups and downs. And so that's some of the stuff that we do. So like we invested in, in Peloton was one of them because mm -hmm. they're at home, to, you know, uh, fitness. Um, recently, here's another piece of, uh, piece of good advice. When people are panicking, there's typically an opportunity. So when you see people freaking out, like, okay, how are people going to – react to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, we made some investments with that as well. Spotify was one we didn't do. We should have. Adam was really on <laughs> yeah. on that one when Rogan Oops. moved over. Way early I was on that one. I wish we would have done that. So that was a, a miss. HubSpot, another one. So that's just, uh, we think is one of the most robust CRMs since almost every business is online or moving that way. And it's, it's uh, a platform that allows people to track uh, algorithms and to create subcategories of your audience and be able to really market to them individually. And so many businesses are online. I can only, I mean I just can't see that but Yeah, and it's one, and there's there's competitors to it, but it's one of the robust ones out there and and we've been using it now for quite some time and 
you know, we believed in that, bought in that um, quite some time ago and early. So, yeah, there's some things like that that I think that um, – We did Fitbit uh, because we saw the, again, the, the at-home fitness and stuff like right. that. And so. and it, well, and, and they're one of those companies It's just a solid company that's been through, you know, decades already in the wearable space and the technology space. So I'm looking at companies that are actual tech companies that are trying to provide services – for fitness and health related yeah. uh, things. Now speaking of Fitbit, what's going on with the? You sent something over about the, the yeah, EU so la- waiting. So last year, uh, Google uh, attempted or did, and this is where I, I need to get some clarity to uh, purchase Fitbit for two point one billion. Now I was under the impression that um, it was all said and done, but I I got a client friend of mine sent me over an article saying that the SEC has yet to fully approve that and it's it's due by July 20th so this month went two weeks now what is it is it because they're afraid they're gonna have too much data and too much power? I don't know so that that's hmm. where I need to do a little more homework I was under the impression that Google has already uh, purchased them I know and, and I thought it was moves, already a done deal um, which was part of the reason why we had invested them back when so I, I didn't know that uh, the SEC hadn't uh, fully approved it now is the only reason why as, as far as I know and this is again this is why why this is not our expertise is isn't it like they're afraid it would be a monopoly or something like in those why the law- SEC or like what would what would cause the SEC to say uh, hold until something gets approved this is my speculation i haven't looked deep into it but i there are laws that are in that that category of preventing monopolies or whatever that's in my speculation i think that's what they're trying to use because google already has so much yeah. analytics on people like everything and then fitbit has tons of analytics and if you combine the two what would that potentially create? You know what I mean? Like now yeah. they're going to know where you're at and what you're saying and what, you know what I mean? All and this your stuff heart like, rate. Your yeah. heart rate. And think about How that. How often you're moving. You know, oh, and, and GPS on you. Do you think about that your for Your patterns second? of where you, where you move, what you do. Think, think about it. You're wearing a Fitbit, right? So it's measuring your heart rate. Google owns them. You see an ad. Now they can start to, to correlate heart rate <laughs> with advertisements and figure out, wait, this works, this doesn't work. Like, oh, they're excited. Yeah, yeah. heart rate variability. Of, yeah. Like, it could get really specific. Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that's also what makes it really cool, though. I, I mean, know, right? I know, right? So, I mean, I mean, that's why I think it was such a good buy and why I think that was such a smart move on Google. So, I wonder if you're right. Doug, are you Well, I mean, what do you think Apple's doing with their Apple Watch? You know, like, it's, this is all part of that long-term strategy of trying to get even further into people's uh, everyday habits in in lifestyle. Dude, habits. how how crazy is advertising going to be? You know what I mean? It's gonna, I'm going to read an ad and be like, "Sal, your nonna would have loved this." I'm like, "Oh shit, my grandma? How'd they know she would have liked that?" I know, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> you, know? you know, speaking of businesses and stuff, did you you guys are familiar with uh, the ice cream museum, right? Yes. I, the what? Is that San Francisco? Yes, yeah. in San Francisco. Ice cream museum? Tell me you come on your kids come on, definitely guy. know what it is. No, I've never done that. Everybody, you've never seen those pictures like people posted on Instagram where they're like uh, in these specific rooms and they're, you know, no. in, in these. Uh, what? It's what like, the hell's wrong, man? Oh, you got your kids would love it. Yeah, I mean, right now with COVID, so why I'm bringing it up? So it was, start, it was a startup company uh, in 2016 by a 24 year old girl. Uh, and I, by the time I think she was, so two years later, 2018 or 2019, 18 or 19. Uh, she got forty million invested in her. Whew. So yeah, VC came over, said it was this brilliant concept, and really all it is is it's a a a place that you can get ice cream, but it's really centered around taking photos on Instagram, yeah, it's like taking pictures of it. It's like you take a tour through this, you know, <clears throat> you know, museum, and they're just it's sta- it's lighting is perfect. It's like these these three dimensional type rooms where you can have like you know. You could swim in a bed of sprinkles. You know, you can swing in a, a cotton candy cloud. You can do all these like things that look really cool on Instagram. Oh my god! And it uh, it did yeah. I mean, it did really well. I don't know if it did well enough to uh, uh, you know get forty million. But so, anyways, the point of me bringing it up is like uh, I was reading Forbes uh, this morning, and they say like uh, the ice cream museum is melting. Like so, it's it's tanking. Of course, with COVID, nobody can go there. Yeah. But it's not just that. So that's and, and this is what's interesting about what what I'm seeing right now with COVID is, you know, we're we're blaming COVID for a lot of these these business failures. But what it's really doing is exposing a lot of business that may not have been operating really, really tight. In many or, cases, yep, uh, well. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, it's not, I mean, when you think about it, a, a, a company that's being ran really well, and this is not, uh, you know. This is ple- not true for all of them, right? Right, and, yeah. and, and this is not me saying, uh, taking a knock at people that have been hurt by COVID. I, I, have, I have total empathy for everybody. I mean, this is a, a shitty, tough situation for everybody right now, or for the most part. 
Um, but you know, a, a lot of uh, people are getting woke up right now that oh shit, you know, what if yeah. revenue didn't come like it would? I actually, know? do you have to have savings right. in mind? Yeah, and and, and I, I should be operating like like that, you know. And by the way, a good a good book for you to read, uh, you know, when it comes to like scaling a business and keeping things like this in mind is Rework, which is the creators of Basecamp and. You know, it really helped me during our time of evaluating, like, bringing on more staff. Like, you get to a point where you think you should just start hiring and bringing people on and really reevaluating that before you decide to make that move and just throw money at a, at a person. They had to lay off, so this over 200 employees. But what everyone's saying is, like, I guess, you know, it's being ran by, like, a 26-year-old. Yeah. So she, like, berates people. Like, Oh, so she's not... Yeah. She's not good. She's not a great leader. Interesting. And so, of course, because of all this, it's all coming out. And so this business is starting to take. I mean, in four years' time, uh, it hasn't even done a total of $10 million, yet it got $40 million VC money. So be interesting. And it's what I'm, what I'm curious about is a lot of these companies that are riding the hype train of like social media and oh, like yeah. the TikTok game and like doesn't I mean, it remind you of like when you used to walk on the boardwalk and there was like a, a cardboard painting cut out and like people put their head through and they're like, Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. That's like what that business model is to me. Well you know, you know they you know they value you know they value TikTok at a between a hundred and five and a hundred and ten billion dollars, yeah. which is the the largest startup in the world. And it's TikTok. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like I look at it and I go like it's got the users. Yeah, I it's, know, but what uh, user, the types of users it has, why they're on there? Well, why it's, it's so it, why it's so successful? And this is, I, and I've been trying to scratch my brain around this whole thing too, because it's just like it's so annoying. They make it easy to follow and do content. Like they don't have to come up with content; they just have to do what the trends are. So, are you guys familiar with Koji yet? K O J I. No. Okay. So yes, the meme uh, yes. generator. So yes. this is my my prediction: is this is the next big TikTok, Instagram, whatever that's coming? I totally agree. And if you believe in what you just said right now, is the reason why TikTok is so huge is because they make it so easy to use already creative content and yep. repurpose it for yourself. There's a company that's specializing in memes and games. Oh, that's brilliant! To do that exact same thing. Oh, that's brilliant! Is to use yeah. already. Yeah, it's gonna blow up. Creative content and make it easy. Dude. You know, the other thing I heard about TikTok too is that the way the algorithm work is so different than YouTube and Instagram. Those, and it makes it easy for people to get views and likes and attention. So that's why so many people gravitate towards it because they get a lot of attention. Yeah, because you get a ton. Like yeah. it's you, it's it's not a big deal. You know who did a great uh, spoof on that was um, uh, what's his name, Dom uh, Mazzetti or whatever, oh, I know the, the comedian. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he did a funny video like a week ago on uh, how TikTok. Yeah. He breaks it down. I, I don't trust TikTok. I won't let my kids on it. It's a it was a Chinese owned it is company. Chinese owned. Yeah. I don't trust that at all because of, of course under the, the the Chinese government communist state, state run. It's state run. Yeah. So. You don't think they're going to use all this this data? In, look at look at Huawei, are, and yeah. and here's the thing: like, it's so funny to me because like, the, well, it's just because it's so popular, everybody just went crazy with it. But remember when we were all like changing our face to look old, and then found out it was a Russian, yeah, you yeah, know, dude. like <laughs> hack that like they built this literally to just steal everybody's uh, data, images, and yeah, data. Yeah, no, yeah. I say no to that. You know, it, so. It's uh, like that is yeah. the new. The new like uh, uh, like crime out there, like it's so more sophisticated than we Dude. even know. They're making it like like this is entertaining. This is awesome. This is act like it's something you actually want to use. It's like fishing, and, but way while more, they're stealing, it's way more complicated than it's fishing. Like, it's insane. Yeah, like yeah. It, they're way beyond Dude, us. Did you guys see uh, my son's uh, big ass bowl of uh, of cereal yesterday? No, <laughs> he, he got he got the blueberry uh, magic spoon. Oh, he's oh. the one that ate I, all I, this. Yeah, I saw the empty box in the trash. Yeah, so yeah, I, I had true. one like half bowl uh, the other day. So oh, I, I love it. I love it He's when responsible. I, see, I love it when I see him eat it because I'm like, protein. Oh. Eat the protein. It's good for you. Dude, yeah. so I got some for you guys. So they just sent an email out and they were like trying to like put, because here's the thing. They've covered a lot of ground already with their flavors, but they're starting to ask the community now, like, what do you guys want to see like coming up in the future? And there was art. There was like some of them there like putting out there as examples. And I want to see which one you guys would probably pick. Oh, out yeah. Of these let me options. hear, let me hear so, flavors. Yeah. yeah so, so one of them's apple cinnamon. Okay. That's good. You, you got cookies and cream. Okay. You got banana nut. You got mm. chocolate peanut. You got plain. I don't know what plain means. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it tastes plain. Like checks, uh, you know, like the oh, plain checks or whatever. Oh, like like okay. wheat kind of. Yeah. Okay. And then you got strawberry shortcake and you got donut. 
Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. The one that's interesting. What I was would, the first one again? The very first uh, one? Apple Cinnamon, I think. Yeah, I think Apple Cinnamon. Apple Cinnamon sounds- I liked Apple Jacks. Yes, yeah, so did I. Uh, uh, Apple Jacks I like the cookies good. and cream might be interesting. Cookie, well, I like chocolate I've, peanut. I have mean, you I had, had a cookies and cream cereal before? I haven't. Either have I. But, you know, with milk, cookies and cream kind of goes together, right? Yeah. yeah you know of. what I mean? I don't know. I, yeah. Like ice cream. No, Apple Jacks was good cereal when I was a kid. Yeah. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of them. Yeah. Cookies and cream is interesting. Like I, I wouldn't have thought that would be an option. Dude, they're blowing it out. They're, yeah, I, I don't, they're, no sugar, and they're making. You know, my kid's eating it after he was done. He's like, "That's pretty good." I'm like, "There was no sugar in that." No, I, I, that was protein that you. Ate. I would say of of the partners that we have and that we've brought mm-hmm. on, like we were, we're always trying to introduce our audience to new new companies. I would say of this last quarter of companies that we've talked about or brought on board, Magic Spoon is for sure the one that's exploded. Well, I mean, have you seen other high protein competitors? No. It's like six grams of protein. Well, I mean, that's, serving. that's like, why that we all. I think, I think why we got excited about it was just like an option that actually I would have. I mean, this is something I, I love it today, but I really would have went bananas over it when I was like competing and stuff. Oh, to I be know, because huh? it's like such a treat to me, and to be able to with something that's so macro friendly like that, and oh no, I'm I'm a huge yeah. fan, dude. Did you? Uh, what did you think of Unsolved Mysteries last night, Justin? Did you oh, watch any yeah. of those? No, I didn't watch. I heard you guys watch. Katrina and I were. She put, she beat me in cards last it night. It was. She was uh, did you yeah, hear? I, she did. Did. <laughs> I saw the score. Oh, she right. came in all braggadocious. Oh my god! I First time it. ever, right? Like that's she, like my. Like she's like, my, ask Adam about uh, the, <laughs> it's the, the, the last few. I, games I went to played. go eat breakfast this morning. Sat at the table and there was like a notepad and it had a score on it. Adam, Katrina, underneath it said, <laughs> "Win it real big, winner, Katrina." You, that's what you get. I bet you talk hella shit when you beat her. That's it, man. I do talk. She throws up. She doesn't normally play. So she's been giving me, I, she's been razzing me because I've been kind of razzing you guys and everybody else. Like, man, I really want, like, if we come up here as a tradition every year, I really want to get everybody into cards. I love playing cards. Yeah. And it's such a great pastime for like camping and trips like yeah, this. Yeah, I agree. And so I really want to get everybody to, to play. And so we can all get, get into some competitive games. And I've always got, try to get Katrina to play. And she's like, eh, I don't want to. And so she always says like, you tell people I can't play. I can play. So she, she was talking shit to me last night. Like, all right, let's play. And I'm like, okay, let's, what do you want to play? And like, she's like, we'll play some Jim Romy. I'm like, all right, cool. I like, I like Romy. Let's play. And, uh, she got me, she got me last night and she never wins at cards. Like I win, but we normally play hearts and spades, which that's my game. Yeah. And, uh, we played rummy last night and she, she, she and she took you out. Yeah. Yeah. She took well, you out. Dude, well, you missed unsolved mysteries. <laughs> yeah. We picked the UFO episode. We did. And yeah. We skipped. I'm going to be honest. It, it creeps me out just as much today as it did when I was It was, kid. it was creepy. You know what? A, a big element that was missing though oh, was know. the narrator guy. What's that guy's name? The voice, I, right? I, I don't know, but he was like essential for me. He was dude. But the music, as soon as it starts, oh, yeah, I was. I Don't got the, skip the intro. I got the old chills that I used to when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I loved scary stuff, even though it terrified me. Like I don't. It was a weird thing that I would do. So I'd watch unsolved. Well, Mysteries. like folklore, you know, like people that actually experience things that were like weird, dude. bizarre, scary. Dude, that, this, yeah. you and I are the same on this. Yeah, Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster, UFOs, Speak, that kind of stuff. I have some info that so that like uh, January they just. Like there's there's new video for Loch Ness monster for Nessie again as of January. New video? Yes. Yeah. And I was I was trying to bring this up uh, the last few podcasts. I forgot. But that'll like, be good quality. But like in my in my area, you know that that uh, next door app where everybody's on there, like all your neighbors and whatnot. So there was these there was a few people that were posting about you know these low growl noises and smashing of trees, like like snapping of big trees. Uh, in their area and so everybody immediately are like oh sasquatch you know <laughs> and, and it's funny because there's literally a a building in felton where i live that's devoted to to bigfoot sightings and like you can buy paraphernalia there and everything and like it's like a big thing lots of people think they've seen uh bigfoot so scale one to ten what did you guys think i mean of, of of the one that we saw yeah the show I'd, I'd say like a seven yeah i'd say seven eight if it had the narrator it would have been a, yeah. a home run but I, I missed that guy for sure i want to i want to see more episodes and see how you know the rest of it plays out but i i mean i like it, it does give you Dude, the feels like you used to this one covered a uf i forgot where it was this ufo story but you had so many witnesses through so many different parts of this town and it was all linear it was like in this progression that went from you know the top of the map all the way down hit all these like Dude, same cities people getting abducted and so here's the thing with ufos that's kind of i mean i love that kind of stuff right i you know you ever read these conspiracy theories of how they say that governments have known about alien visitations and stuff for a long time and that some some governments actually work with these extraterrestrials right and, and that's how we advanced because we've just taken their 
their uh, technology and then that's how we've implemented like phones and all this stuff and progressed. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I love it. You've, I, you've reversed engineered I, a lot of it. You know, we might need to come together uh, right now as a, as a world and a country. <laughs> yes, we might need an alien invasion. Day. That's yeah. what this is all leading so, to. So I'm perfect, telling you. You know, so perfect timing you know how right quickly now. everybody would forget everything? Yeah. Like everybody's pissed off and yelling now, at each other. Now are your other. kids too young? Did they watch that show? Maybe we should watch that tonight. Independence Day? Yeah, yeah. You should pull out Independence Day. That's that such a classic. Oh, yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah, we should watch that. I'm trying to think. Is that scary? No, not really. Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll Dude, know one part. Remember we'll, when yeah, the alien we'll jumps find out, out later. Yeah. And he's still alive or whatever. Yeah, 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 when he yeah. punches yeah. him in the face. No, yeah. when they when they when the alien kills the dude in the in the when they're trapped in the, oh, the yeah. cell, and then he uses his little tentacles to communicate through the person. Well, my youngest that might, might be, be a little, but yeah, we'll, just, you just cover his face or do what my dad used to do, which is fast forward the the, the dirty parts, <laughs> you know, even though I could see it because of VHS. I saw yeah. a boob, Dad. Hey, uh, nipples. First question is from Jamilia144. I have really good quad development, but my hamstrings are lagging a bit behind. What are some exercises or strategies to increase my hamstring size and strength? Yeah, two things you can do um, to work on weak body parts. Number one, learn how to prime your individual body properly. So if you have MAPS Prime, take the test, the, the compass test. Actually, we have a free webinar. Um, what's the webinar, Doug, that people can go to? Is it mapsprimewebinar.com. There you go. Go there. It's free. Watch those assessments and figure out how to prime your body. That'll help you activate uh, all your muscles in the most effective way possible. Here's a second thing. This is super easy. Work your hamstrings at the, first, at the beginning of your workout. Mm -hmm. Before you do squats, before you do Such good advice lunges. because it's rarely ever, who do you ever see go, unless they're deadlifting, right? You might see someone start with deadlifting, but rarely ever do you see someone start with like hamstring specific exercises. That's first. it. That's all you got to do. I used to do this with my female clients all the time because oftentimes my female yeah. clients really wanted well-developed posterior chain. So on, you know, on our workouts, that's how I would start. We would start with leg curl, stiff legged deadlift, one, you know, one legged toe touch, hip thrust. Then we would go into our barbell squats and lunges and that kind of stuff. And well, it worked like magic. Yeah. Isn't that also like the body prioritizes like what, what kind of work you present it, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the beginning of the workout, uh, more so than the end of the workout. So that would be something to consider. I also like pre-exhaust strategies, which is similar to what you're alluding to right now. So I would, I would go do... You know, let's say it's leg day, and I might prime or do some leg uh, leg curls first, mm -hmm. and then go into my squats. And so you're gonna feel like squat. Hamstrings rarely are the muscle that gives out in squats, right? It's normally quads or glutes mm -hmm. or what's going to fail before anything else. And so a lot of people don't realize. I mean, your hamstrings, especially when you go deep deep squats. My hamstrings always get sore. If I I could just do heavy squats and real deep full range motion, and my mm -hmm. hamstrings will get sore too, and that's without pre exhausting them. So if you really want to feel them or get them, like you can feel afterwards really sore from it, is do a pre exhaust exercise that's hamstring like an isolation exercise like lying lying leg curls or any sort of leg curl type of exercise, and then go into that. The other thing is uh, good mornings, dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Exercise. Good mornings are such a such a great exercise. Uh, you can load it because you're putting it on your back. And that's just it. Uh, the the machine exercises for hamstrings, the, the single leg curl, the seated leg curl, the lying leg curl. You just, I mean, they, don't, they pale in comparison. They do. You can only load them so much. And I've shared the story on, on this podcast multiple times of – uh, how how much it blew my mind when I completely eliminated all hamstring machines for like six plus months, and all I did was like deadlift variations and good mornings and things like that. And then when I went back to a lying leg curl, I had like two three x my weight on that machine, which and I had not even done it. It just shows you how much it developed my yeah. hamstrings from doing those movements. I think there's a lot of challenge too because sometimes people think, well, if I if I work my hamstrings first. I'm not going to be able to squat as much. And I know that squats are such a great exercise. You know, This happened uh, years ago to one of my clients. He really wanted to develop his shoulders. That was one of his uh, weak body parts. Um, so what we did is we would hit shoulders before we would go into exercises like bench press. Now, he was like worried. Oh, my bench press is going to go down. So yeah, of course, because your shoulders are going to be fatigued, but we're going to lift up that weak body part. And sure enough, that's what happened. His, de his delts got more developed. Uh, because we worked the shoulders first, then we went into bench press. Yes, he was weaker, but that's okay. He got what he wanted. Eventually, later on, he started with his bench press uh, at the beginning of the workout again, and he was stronger than he ever was uh, before. So you're not going to be able to squat as much because you're doing your hamstring exercises first, but that's okay. 
Right now you're identifying a body part that seems to be lagging or maybe not as strong or just not developing as quickly as other body parts. By the way, the sooner you address this, the better. If you wait a long time, uh, then it's going to take longer for you to catch up uh, to your weak body part. Then you may have to work hamstrings at the beginning of your workout for the next two years uh, just to catch up to your, your quad. So I'd say start doing that now. Start your workout with that. Good priming. Then move into your compound you know, exercise that works the quads and, and give yourself some time and watch what happens. Next question is from CDT T. Young. You guys have always talked about tracking normal food intake to find maintenance, but you have begun promoting a formula type approach. What is the difference between your formula and others you seem to bash in the past? It's so funny when people yeah, no, come at it like this. Yeah, dude. no. <laughs> okay, so so I'm assuming they're referring to ma yeah. macros. Yes, and, okay. totally. Okay, so uh, it's it's an important part of getting to the point where you can then eat healthy and not stress over food and, and, and fu a more intuitive, I would say. That's always approach. the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. But in order to get there, you, you know, you, you, have you have to- You have to track. You have to learn what- you have to learn the most important things or the, or the big rocks first, which are proteins, fats, carbs, and calories. Now, they're not the only thing. I mean, if you get stuck there forever, you're going to be stressed out about your diet. You'll be neurotic. Yeah. It's not going to work long term. But to get to the point you want to get to, that's a great place to start. you got to learn these things you before to you can educate yourself. It just works. Well, it just I think works it, they're coming from a place. So we talk about this on the show a lot, right? And I stand by this still. The, the most ideal way to figure out your, your maintenance calories is for you to be very consistent with your movement through the week. So either use a tracker like a Fitbit or stay consistent with your, your types of workouts that you're doing as far as calorie expenditure and moving. So you're trying to keep that as controlled as possible and then track your food. And the goal is to stay the same in your weight mm -hmm. for about a week or two. That is the perfect world. That's even better than this macro calculator that we built. But the reality is that we still get tons of emails and DMs of people, where do I start? Like, I have no clue. And could you tell me how many grams of protein? And so it really is to, is to help service people. It's not us saying that this is now the way to do it. And we mm -hmm. now everything that we said in the past is no longer true. It's just more good information that we're trying to provide for people. It, it it's is. Not, it's, it's, this is not a matter of, oh, we bashed uh, this way of, of figuring out calories and macros by other people. And then now all of a sudden we're we're yeah. now pointing people in that direction. No, we're we're providing a service to help those people that are absolutely clueless on where to start and maybe don't have the discipline to start tracking themselves for two weeks and to tease out all the variables that we're talking about. But that would be the best way to still do it. This, this at least gives them some starting point. Yeah, this isn't there to try and figure out how to fit in your pop tarts in your meal planning. You know, like it's still like those those values still exist with what we bring up, like that we had poked holes and, and had problems with, you know, the flexible dieting, the IFI, IIFYM type of uh, mentality, which still we said has value in trying to figure out how to structure and how to maintain structure with your, your planning of your meals throughout the week. It's just like, you know, people can abuse that by then trying to fit all these like processed foods in there and like comfort foods and things that they really like, you know, like need in their diet. Uh, also like it's, 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 a step. It's a stepping stone that leads you into uh, educating yourself even further and having a deeper understanding of nutrition, what really benefits mm -hmm. you. So it's, it's, it's just a value for you to use. And it's free. Yeah. You know, see, most people, there's people that have built apps around this and charge for this service. And we built this massive pillar page, which took a ton of resources and time to build for everybody. And it's absolutely 100% free. There's yeah. no gimmicks to it. Like, use it if you want to, and if it helps you. Otherwise, do what we've been telling everyone to do for a very long time. So if you're the person who's asking this question, and you've already figured out your maintenance calories, and you're an intuitive eater, you don't need that. This no. resource is to, to help millions of other people or also work as a place for people to find mind pump like so that j to give you a little bit of business understanding mm. of why we would do something like this that macro uh, macronutrient calculator is already ranking on google on the first page and we've only had it up for a week and a half so now what we're hoping is that anybody that searches for a macronutrient calculator online falls into mind pumps uh, into our network and now gets to read all the other free content that's attached to that's what a pillar page is for and learn about what we're trying to talk about. So it's really providing a, a free service for all of you that listen if 
you haven't already figured out how to intuitive eat, if you haven't already figured out your maintenance calories, it's, it's and a, it's more so to capture in new leads from people that have never heard of yeah, my it's Yeah, it's a good it's a good start. You know, they are generalizations, but they're better than the no uh, you know generalizations. Yeah, no guidance. There's mm-hmm. no gu- so you start with the recommendation, but then you have a lot of work to do on your own. But at least you have a place to start. That's really what it's what it's all about. But that you're not done. You're definitely yeah. not done there. It's just. You know, for somebody that has no idea. Like, Which, by the way, if you read the pillar page, you cover all that. Oh, yeah. 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 There's yeah. a lot There's, of content in there yeah. and stuff that you can read. and that's It's the not point. just about the formula. No, yeah. not at all. Next question is from Wrigley Bear. I do rock climbing and American Ninja Warrior training for pretty much all of my exercises, but listening to your podcast has got me considering adding resistance training to the mix. How can I add it in a way that supplements my performance? You don't need to do much. If, mm. if you're doing a lot of, you know, this took me, this took me a little while to figure out, um, because mainly because most, most of my clients were everyday average people. Mm-hmm. So there was a small percentage of like really hardcore fitness enthusiasts that would hire me. But when they did, you know, I'd have people who like are competitive cyclists, uh, you know, and they love to, they, they love to do these hundred mile races or these marathon runners, or, you know, I have clients who played tennis, five days a week because they loved it so much. And so then what I would do is I would try to add resistance training. I'd say, okay, train with me two days a week or three days a week with weights. And their performance would suffer because they were already doing so much Mm -hmm. that I I added too much resistance training. Mm -hmm. So I started to really figure out that really the way to benefit these people with resistance training when they're doing that much activity is to just do a little bit. Mm -hmm. So no joke. uh, One, two days a week tops. Usually one day a week. I mean, if you're doing like, if you're doing four days a week or more of this American uh, Ninja Warrior type training, which is pretty- It's intensive. It's pretty intensive. One day a week of weights. And you know what you should do when you go to the gym? Four exercises, four or five exercises. T- strength, you know, focus on strength. Base layer type strength That's exercises. That's it. Compound movements. You know, I would do squatting or deadlifting, some kind of a row because yeah. you're getting lots of pull-ups already probably, some kind of an overhead press, um, you know, maybe one other exercise. If you want to add anything else, I would just add priming mobility. and mobility movements, and you're going to be great. You'll be kicking yeah. This out. is my, my brother-in-law, uh, um, Tom, his, his Instagram. I'm going to blow his Instagram up right now just to mess with him because he doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> so it's TVR is me, right? All one word. So TVR is me, and he's a like hardcore uh downhill mountain biking guy. I mean, he tracks every mile, his elevation change. He's training multiple he times a week. He takes it super serious. Very, very serious. And he's hardcore about it. And he's lost a ton of weight in the last like you know year and a half of him. And he's been doing this now for years, but he's really, because he's gotten so aggressive about his training, he's lost a ton of weight. And I've told him, I said, hey, I know you're getting really lean and stuff like that, but you know, you'd really, uh, you know, benefit from a little bit of strength training added in there and, you know, maybe me helping and tweaking your diet. So I had him start like tracking his diet and he was averaging like 30 to 50 grams of protein a day and not strength training. And I was telling him that he's probably lost a ton of, mu- ton of muscle from what he's doing. And he was like, oh, we got in like this debate back and forth. I said, listen, this is what all I want you to do. I want you to try and hit your your grams of protein close to your body weight. So if you weigh at 150, something like that, get somewhere between 125 to 145 in that range. Try and hit that every single day for your protein intake. And then I want you to follow MAPS Anabolic one day a week. One day a week, I want you to follow that. Um, and he calls it Muscle Mondays. He does it on Monday. It's mm. his thing right now. But he's been doing it now for, I want to say, a month or two months. So if somebody is, if you're listening right now and you're like a hardcore sport, uh, outdoor type person, but you're trying to also integrate that. Like he's a cool person to kind of follow because what I love about Tom is he like you could tell him to follow something. He's got kind of like that engineer mind. He'll just do it. Yeah, he'll he's doing it to a T. And so he's been and he's like super blown away. He's like, dude, I can't believe. And he's now really starting to see it translate into his his downhill mountain biking stuff. He's like, yeah. bro, I'm blowing by everybody going uphill now way more than I ever was before yeah. just from well, one day of training. I mean, most athletes used to have that fear. It was like, you know, the muscle bound kind of fear where it was going to restrict all their, their skill on the field, like especially in baseball. And then you started to see that if you incorporate your skills training at a high level, uh, you know, consistently uh, in conjunction with, with strength training, you know, it's just going to enhance it, but it's the right dose. Right. And, and so, uh, you know, if that's something that's your priority, you're going to prioritize your skills training training your sport specific way of, of providing activity, the the strength part of it is supplemental to to really then feed into what you're already doing. I love this conversation too because it, it highlights we're we're talking about an extreme person, right? 
but it really highlights part of why so many people get trapped in plateaus and why they don't see the results they want because everybody thinks that more is better. There is there is the right dose. And it doesn't take as much as so many people think it is. And the harder you work and the more you put in doesn't necessarily translate into more results. Dude, in the I had a huge debate years ago when I was, uh, you know, training hard in jujitsu and the guys in there would ask me about resistance training because obviously I was a trainer. And I remember telling, you know, them like, hey, you know, just just lift some weights and watch what happens. They're like, well, you know, I do jujitsu five or six days a week and this and that. And I said, no, 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 go to the gym, do three exercises. That's it. Three sets of each five reps, don't go to failure, but lift kind of heavy, just do that and watch what happens. And then they, they would say, well, that's nothing. That's not going to do anything. I mean, if I'm going to lift weights, I need to go at least three or four days a week in order to do it. I said, no, no, no. One day a week, three exercises, do that for the next month and then report back to me. All of them were sold. At the end of the month, they were all like, I can't believe the improvement in my technique and my stability and my strength just from doing that. Resistance training is incredibly moldable to fit any context and the context is what matters if you're training like crazy doing a bunch of stuff you got to just add a little bit yeah. that's all you got to do i do have to make the point though too that uh, the sports that have off seasons are smart and, yeah. and and for the reason being like why we cycle through different programming and we we train our body in different ways uh because then it translates and it fills those gaps when you come back uh to your regular type of training that uh, you know are, are just promoting very specific things so uh it, it might be something to consider a few months of training just specifically uh resistance training and then you know cycle back into your regular routine next question is from nick zanace if you see people participating in very poor programming and you are not a trainer but very well educated in fitness, should you say anything? <laughs> I thought well, this was a funny question. I know. Yeah. You know what, dude? Here's the deal. Absolutely like, not. Yeah, yeah you're not, you're not going to change anybody. No, unless you see, like, I mean, I could see, like, if you're like, oh my gosh, that person's about to hurt themselves and you feel a responsibility to prevent them from, like, dropping something on their head or falling off of a, a you know, physio ball. You know, maybe because that might you know. But they're an adult. Might, it, well, it might time. mess with your your, yeah. your 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 psyche a little bit, or not your psyche, but you know, your conscious, I should say. But otherwise, you ain't helping them. Nobody takes unsolicited advice. Not only that, <laughs> nobody does. It's, but it's it's it, not only that, but it's extremely arrogant of us to think that we know that the programming is bad. I mean, I consider I consider everybody in this room an expert fitness programmer, right? But. If I see somebody doing something that doesn't fall in line with maybe one of the programs that we created, do I think that they're doing terrible programming? I don't know what the fuck their goal is. Dude, it, it, they could be doing something that is very specific yeah. to what they're trying to achieve, and I don't know that, and so I'm very careful. And I used to make this mistake, because for sure I was this kid in my early 20s. Oh, all excited. That I had all this newfound knowledge. Yeah. Couldn't wait to tell everybody Can't about it. Can't wait to enlighten everybody. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're not and, bicep curling and I would, one foot off the And ground? I would present it just like this, too. I'm out to save the world you know i'm gonna help this person like they're terrible programming i'm here to save you with the good programming like it was like that but the reality of it is like that was extremely pompous of me uh, no i have no clue what this person is really trying to achieve or what their desired outcome is and it's it's uh, silly to me to think that i i know better just by watching them work i got out. to the point where i actually developed a way of trying to give people advice because i always thought i could i could help you i can help them. <laughs> So one thing I would do is I'd you know I'd walk it to, you know in between their 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 sets I'd be like, hey what, you know what's go cool? what are you working on right now what are you working oh, on today yeah oh I'm doing you know shoulder press oh that's awesome you mind if I show you a different way to do it and, you know and I would show oh them the different God. way I know. hated guys yeah, like you you know here's <laughs> I totally I, I would hate me too you nobody takes unsolicited advice it's like watching an obese person uh, get uh, a salad and put ranch dressing on it and then you walk up to them Mr. Trainer <laughs> hey. You know, I know you're trying to lose weight right now, but did you know that dressing's about 600 calories? I bet if you took you know it off- You know where it's going to go? Psh, psh, yeah. Right here. Yeah. 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 That person's going to look at you and be like, fuck you, <laughs> get out of my face. Yeah. I'm not listening to you. They don't take, people don't take uh, advice like that. Mm. The, the, the only, they have to be open to taking advice. And so usually that comes in the form of a question. They ask you, be the good example. You're not going to convert everybody. You're not going to fix the world. It's just not going to happen. And yeah. a pro oftentimes, I, and this is what really got me to the point to, to realize that, oftentimes I realized that I would prevent the person from asking me a question mm -hmm. because I was already going over there and hammering them. And so it took them longer. Well, maybe to do the, the right move thing. is to do that exercise right next to them and yeah. just say, hey, oh, cool. I'm doing those too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But better, right? But better. Yeah. The, only way, I, the only way I see that is, you know, Sal, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, is that if I saw like a 65 year old lady 
who's right. doing like lap pull downs and it's like jerking her shoulders around all over the place and like I'm gonna come over and like say hey can I help you with that like mm. let me show you and then I would probably show her something that's about it and why because one I know that women are a little uh, one a lot more receptive to hearing it, like advice way like that. more yeah. right Men and, are the worst. and at that age at 65 years old she really could potentially hurt herself and is probably gonna be very grateful that some young fitness guy comes over and helps her out mm. that's probably Especially the only a handsome one yeah, yeah, yeah right so I think all the rest. <laughs> Uh, of the people out there are probably not going to receive uh, your advice very, very. Dude, well. I'll never forget. I went up to it. This this guy who was doing. Uh, you, I, you guys probably know who this guy was. He would wear this this white belt and he'd load up the the, the shrug machine and the hammer strength shrug machine with every plate in the gym. Yeah. He grabbed the handles. Do the chicken shrugs. And he would just twitch. <laughs> you know, his reps were like that. And yeah. I remember, you know, I was like, I'm going to go help this dude because he's not doing anything. So I walked over to him. I'm like, hey, you know. Uh, if you move through a full range of motion, I tried to ask, you know, talk science. It works the muscle fibers better, this and that. And he looked at me. So this was his reply. He looked at me and he goes, you don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he went back to doing his lift. And I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Served. Yeah. yeah. That didn't work uh, very well. Oh, it? I got burned. Yeah. yeah. Look, check this out. Uh, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube. The Mind Pump Podcast. You'll love it. I promise. Also, we have lots of free guides on everything from building certain body parts to burning body fat to nutrition. You can find all those guides at mindpumpfree.com. And finally, you can find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.